Hi and welcome to Old School Blues Guitar. It is time to do the third verse of Tampa Red's Bumblebee Blues. We're working our way through one of the great, really epic solo acoustic bottleneck guitar instrumentals of all time. I'm not sure when he did this. It was in the 1930s. Pretty sure. And we've gone through the introduction, verse 1, verse 2, and now when he gets to the third verse, he goes into this kind of stop time, change in tempo thing. Let me play it for you all the way through and then we'll break it down. second or the third verse there's some differences there and there's a couple parts I am going to try to tab out this entire song note for note and you can listen to the original and use the tab for lessons sake there's no way I can remember every little tiny variation for seven or however many verses there are in the song so I'm just going to try to show you show you the basic idea here so the stop time part he goes into this from the introduction or from the turnaround the first part. It's an open, sixth string, twice, second to third fret on the first string. Really makes that fifth fret of the second string moan. And the bass, if you listen real carefully, he's just kind of tossing that in whenever he has an opening. And sometimes he'll use his finger and brush the open string, kind of get a chord feel. So what I'm playing is... And then open five, open six to lead into the next phrase. So the first phrase... So I do that. And you just have to... When I approach the bass on some of these tunes, you know, listening, it's hard to figure out exactly what he's doing sometimes. So I just try to do what feels right, what's rhythmic. Here, I think I hear it pretty clearly. This part, just going back and forth between the sliding it, kind of smearing it from the fifth to the fourth. Mess around with that and try to get that. Then the bass, and he does the same thing. Repeats it. So the whole thing. He does that. So it's second, third, open, seventh fret. Smeared up, and that's going to end up that first verse. So let me do the whole thing for you. And then he does this. So it's open, first string, second fret, open. Check the tab. And then the D, G7 chord. So, two, three, two, fifth fret of the second string. And then this slick. It's something like this. Sure exactly what he does there, but he goes to the 12th fret and just kind of touches it on and off. 
He does a lick back down here where I'll have it tabbed out for you, but it's some variation on this. One of those licks, so it's generally when I play it, I play it like this. So I do slide on and off, and then do it again at the third fret. I like that. Or we've done that lick before, and then the the the, the lick over the five. So it's, uh, I gotta go back and get, get this in context. So let's do it from this leg. He's doing the A seventh again with the walk in bass. And then I hear this. So it's two, three, and then hold it on the three. So he's going, sliding from the fifth to the fourth on the second string, open, and then sliding back, fifth and fourth. Now, in his version, he does, I'm not sure exactly what he does after that, but I, do, I usually do this. Bouncing bass thing from the third fret of the fourth string, open, second fret of the fifth string, open four string into the turnaround. But you could do a lot of different things here. Again, you learn all this stuff and you put it back together the way you want to it. So it's like you could do that. I think he does something like this. some kind of lick down here and I think he uses mostly the open strings and that little thing like he does. So let me play my version of the third verse for you and this is one I'm less certain on exactly note for note. Now this lick, he doesn't play it exactly like that. He plays it pretty close. I like to play it. To me it sounds cool like that. I just stumbled on that messing around with it. But the other stuff like the exactly what he's playing. So this is verse number three from the turnaround of the previous verse. have to play what feels good to you and what sounds like music. Someone gave me that advice once, you know, don't sit there and try to copy it note for note. You got to be able to play it like music so it sounds good. And if you play it and it sounds good, then it's music and it works. So for Tampa Red's Bumblebee Blues, there's so many little variations on some of these ideas. So this simple idea. <laughs> mixing it up throughout the tune. So I'll try to teach you as many of those variations as I can as we go along. When I come back, we'll do the fourth verse and we'll keep moving. So you've got four, five, stop, six. So I've got like four more verses to go. Lots of good stuff here. See you soon.